there is a lot of evidence for the theory of evolution. Things like fossils and asteroid impact sites, things like that. Um, but two of my very favorite pieces of evidence for evolution would be homologous and vestigial structures. So I'd like to kind of share some of those with you. Um, these are the three questions I want you to try to be able to answer when you finish. Number one, what does homologous and vestigial mean? What do those words mean? What are some examples of each type of structure? And then do humans have any of these structures? First, let's go through the definition of homologous. A homologous structure, these would be um, similar structures in different organisms of a common ancestor. This word's easiest to remember if you can remember that the prefix homo means same. Logus is a little bit like the suffix logi at the end of words like biology, ecology, geology, which means study of. So homologous just really means the study or the observation that there are similar structures in different organisms. One of my favorite homologous structure examples um, would be the limbs of animals. So here you can see five different animals, a crocodile, a bird, a whale, a bat, and a human. And each of these organisms has limbs. Crocodiles have legs, birds have wings, whales have flippers, bats have wings, and humans have arms and legs. This picture shows the blue bones are all very similar. There's a large big blue bone closest to the body on these limbs, followed by two smaller bones, the yellow and the orange. And on this slide, you can see even better how there's a group of bones, and on this picture they're yellow, followed by um, digits. Things like fingers, claws. In a bat, you've got pieces of the wing and even a claw sticking out here and there. So every colored, every different colored bone is similar in the organism next to it on this picture. Another example of homologous structures are shapes of skulls or the pieces of bones in a skull. Here you have a chimpanzee skull, a gorilla skull, and a human child skull. Now each of these organisms has a two-piece jaw a mandible and a maxilla. You can see on the chimpanzee and the gorilla that that bottom piece is a lot thicker than on the human, even though they're very similar. And while I was researching homologous structures, trying to prepare lessons for them, I found this really neat picture from the University of Berkeley. And this picture shows a mammal ancestor and a reptile ancestor, and it's got different colored bones that kind of match up and are homologous to each other. Now on the reptile you can see the dark blue and the yellow bone at the back of the jaw. When you look for those same bones on the mammal, they have moved to the inner ear area. So those three little bones inside your ear, the anvil, the hammer, and the stirrups, or the malleus, the incus and the stapes as they're called, those little bones are supposed to or at least have been thought to be part of the jaws of our ancestors. And the last example of homologous structures would be neck bones. So in human, from the very base of your skull to about the very beginning of your shoulders, you've got seven cervical vertebrae. Now as it turns out, something as big and as tall as a giraffe also has just seven bones in its neck. It's got seven cervical vertebrae too. You've also got kind of an ancestral looking organism. When we go through and count the bones of these fossils, they all have seven cervical vertebrae. So because every living and several non-living um, animals have these seven cervical vertebrae, we call them homologous structures. Vestigial structures, they're not the opposite of homologous structures like a lot of students think. These are actually inherited structures that have lost most or all of their usefulness in an organism, or at least all of the original use. A very creepy example of vestigial structures is the fact that snakes actually do have legs. You can see legs is in quotes there because 
Um, take a look at the skeletal structure on the top of the page. There you can see on the right side that humans have femur bones or these hind limb bones. Well, when you go through and you dissect a snake and you look at its skeleton, you can find matching and very similar femur type bones, very, very small ones in snakes. And when you lift up a snake on the underside of a snake, you can see these little teeny tiny remnants of what used to be hind legs. Another example of a vestigial structure, or a structure that is no longer very useful, is this idea that embryos all develop gill slits no matter what the organism is. So take a look at the far left, you've got fish there that develop gill slits as embryos or as little teeny tiny babies. Reptiles develop them too. And then as you move to the right, you've got birds and humans. Now you and I both know that humans do, they, we do not need gills. We breathe oxygen and we use our lungs. But that doesn't stop us from developing these slits as we're growing. So these evolutionary um, slits are, have become vestigial structures in us because they're no longer useful. This nasty looking picture, this is actually an appendix. Well, it's a large intestine and an appendix. So what you see, that teeny tiny worm looking thing at the bottom right part of the picture, that's the appendix. And then the large, giant looking tube above it, that's your large intestine. So an appendix actually has a blood supply, which I think is really interesting. Because if it was completely useless throughout all of time, there would be no reason to supply that piece of the organ with blood and oxygen and nutrients. So that's pretty good evidence right there that this appendix used to be useful and just over time developed a uselessness. Another great example of a vestigial structure is that whales have a pelvis. So the pelvis inside a whale, totally vestigial. A pelvis is used for walking and whales don't walk. So this piece of bone or these pieces of bone used to once be useful for the whale and now they just kind of float around and are stuck in the cartilage and muscle of a whale's body. Wisdom teeth are a vestigial structure that most teenagers can relate to. Wisdom teeth are these teeth that come in later in life and you can see them, the green arrows are pointing to them. One's actually growing in sideways, the tooth on the bottom. Wisdom teeth are thought to be just an ancestral thing and a long time ago, a common ancestor of ours had more room inside its jaw and inside its mouth for these teeth when they came in. But as our species has evolved, our jaws got smaller and now these teeth don't fit the way they used to. Lastly, a lot of animals have a third eyelid. You can see these especially on crocodiles and alligators. It's this eyelid that goes from the inner corner of the eye sideways and is a lot of time used, um, especially in marine animals and lake animals when they need to go underwater but still be able to see. Some people have even mentioned in class that they've seen cats and dogs and birds with these things. Humans actually have a third eyelid too. It is the medial canthus. It's that teeny tiny corner of your eye where it's really pink. That's actually a tissue that used to be a third eyelid. People can take cadavers or dead people and pull that with tweezers and it fits perfectly across the eye. Now try to answer these questions. Do you know what homologous and vestigial mean? Can you think of some examples of each type of structure? And can you think if humans have these structures or not? Can you give examples of human homologous and vestigial structures? Take a few seconds and see if you can answer. The answers will pop up on the screen in just a second.